Hi, I'm Lana Alicia here. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you with me to one of my overnight early morning shifts with CBS News. I'm currently waiting for an Uber since I'm heading to work at around 3 a.m. It is absolutely not safe for me to be catching a subway at this time of morning. Basically at CBS News, whenever you catch an Uber to work, you fill out a reimbursement form and you get reimbursed for the cost of that Uber at the end of your pay cycle. I haven't physically been in the office in almost two years, so I'm pretty excited to be heading back into the office to sort of train in this new role in our hard news center. Whenever I wake up in the middle of the night for work, I'm always like, what the hell is my life? Like I never imagined that I would be the type of person who would work overnight and sort of get out of my sleep to go to a job, especially for me as someone who loves sleep almost more than anything. So I don't know, with this job, I'm always just shocked that I am working an overnight shift because it is just so, strange not to just be working an overnight shift at CBS News but just be working overnight in general. My heart goes out to everyone who has been doing this for years upon years. I understand your struggle now and your dedication to whatever you are pursuing this overnight shift for. I'm gonna show you my old desk right now. Fact checkers just to sort of sit back here and do our fact checking business, which was nice, but yeah, it's pretty empty right now. So, when I was first hired at CBS this morning, which is now CBS Mornings, I was working as a fact checker on the overnight shift from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. And basically at CBS News, there aren't really assigned desks, you sort of just sort of find an empty desk and log on to any computer with your credentials and start working so let me know come to the office hopefully find a seat on this back row and then log on and you know, do the little back checking job um which is really fun you know sometimes answer the phone as producers to be like when are you going to finish practicing my script? I would be like, I'm working as hard as I could, you know, as hard as I can, you know, I'm trying to find the correct information. I don't want to get sued, you know, you know, I would be here back here doing a little research. CBS News was my first ever job working in journalism. Um, before this, I was at MTV Networks, which is more entertainment. Then I was at Google before that, which is obviously tech. And then I was in college. So um, this is only my second job outside of college. Um, in my first job there, I was I would basically be back here, back checking and whatnot. But we were sent home, which was for me. I personally don't tell anyone, but I love working from home. Working from home has been one of the best things that happened in my career. But um, I'm back here for now. As of now, I'm only back in the office for this one week to train in our hard news center, and then I'll, then I'll be back after this work here from home again, in my regular you know, back check control room role. So uh, let me just take you to the Heart News Center. Back here in the newsroom is a little kitchen area. So before COVID, um, you know, there would be like food and stuff out here. It would feed us overnight and in the mornings, which was nice because when you work overnight, you get hungry people. So they would come here and bring us food. And then this is also another newsroom. The hard news team I'm training with this week is in the basement. I'm not really sure why they're in the basement, but I honestly think it's because of all of the equipment that they need to use. You know, it gets overheated in the basement. It's kind of cool. I'm honestly just making that up. I'm not sure if that's true or not, which is not good for me as a fact checker. I should be making stuff up, but that's where I'm headed right now. Honestly, going to this basement is kind of spooky, but I am scared. But honestly, I am kind of nervous in training your hard news. So basically hard news is a team at CBS News that sort of cuts together our packages and gathers a bunch of the elements and also many other things that I'll learn this week as a basic definition. But what I think um, I know so far is that, you know, we have producers in a hard newsroom, editors in a hard newsroom, scenes in a hard newsroom, writers in a hard newsroom, and basically, you know, some people write the packages and write the readers and, 
debriefs, you have some editors who cut the packages, um, you have some producers who sort of pull BOs, SSBOs, um, NAT BOs, NAT SOTs, SOTs, um, things of that sort. Those are elements, so BOs are like video overs, SSBOs are still string video overs, um, a NAT, um, which is natural sound, this a SOT, it's sort of like sound over tape. Um, and so sort of that's what I'll be doing, it's sort of like learning how to pull those elements, sort of like learning how to write screw up something of that sort, you know, basically training me to be the little producer that I strive to be um, as of now in my career. I have to keep going down. Do, 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 do. Everything here is so secure. It's kind of hard to show you guys what I've been doing because the information that we're working on is quite sensitive, but basically I've been shadowing a few different producers and editors here down here, Heart News. So I've been sort of seeing how they work, um, you know, in their roles. There are, are many different roles down here in the Heart News Center. You have some people who are, like I mentioned earlier, writing, producing, editing, cutting, video element, finding media elements. Um, right now I'm training with someone on how to cut some of the video elements. So that's pretty cool. It is a lot of information to learn. It is very technical heavy. Um, I'm learning how to use things like Avid, Interplay, Media Central, um, and how to search for elements on things like AP Newsroom, Reuters, um, Getty, Shutterstock, and things of that sort. So if I disappear for a while, that's where I'm at working and I can't really like record people's desktops, their laptops while they're working. So yeah. story I was working on just aired. I can't really show the footage in this video because it is highly sensitive and it was very legal. But if you saw the show, you probably saw the story. Like I did a story on Zach Stacy, who is a former NFL player who was recorded on surveillance video abusing his ex-girlfriend in front of a fair five-month-old child. Very tragic story, very brutal and graphic video. Um, but basically, I can show you a screenshot of my name in our rundown. For me, as a producer, basically, a rundown is sort of how do I clean it? A rundown is sort of the place where the show exists. It, it's sort of the order that the show goes in. You sort of like do your one sheet, you put your research in there, you write the stuff in there, you know, basically the teleprompter will sort of pick up with kind of the rundown. Producing that story was difficult. So our show airs at 7 a.m. and the story was assigned to me around like 5, 45-ish a.m. So I had to like quickly research the story, write the script as fast as possible in a factually correct way, you know, in a way that wasn't too graphic or anything. Um, but then we had, of course, had our editors basically rewrote the entire script to make it more succinct because I'm a very long writer. I'm very interested in like long form story production, long form documentary as opposed to, you know, short breaking news stories. So basically whatever. Um, anyways, I had to write it. I had to send it out to our legal and write the clear just to get everything approved. So they like fact fact check to get approved. Um, and then the, one of the producers like literally cut all the elements for me, which is really great because since I'm sort of a beginner yet, cutting those elements would have taken me quite a bit of time to do that. So I'm very helpful that basically the entire team here at CBS Mornings helped me out with that story. I would say that I've been having quite an eventful time back here in the broadcast center. Working from home is great, but it's also sort of nice to be here in person to just see everyone to work with, everyone to really get hands-on experience with like different technologies and things like that. Um, breaking news, I thought this poster was a person looking at me, oh shit, like who is a little much whatever it's just a poster in a while. Um, breaking news is sort of like a bit complicated because stories crash throughout the night. 
you know, stores are constantly updated. Things always happen. The world never stops. Um, and I see myself, you know, if I continue to be in the news industry, I do see myself sort of moving into more of long form production documentary, which is sort of what I studied in undergrad when I did it like a double major anthropology and film, you know, long form documentary, ethnography, things like that. Um, breaking news is great for now, but I just, you know, really have a passion for like those longer, more descriptive narrative feature type pieces. My trip is finally over and I am headed to the train station to go home. Like it is so bright outside. My life is literally so backwards. I work overnight and sleep in the daytime. Like how does that even make any sense? I literally have no idea. But I I'm just glad to be able to go home to get some sleep because I am exhausted. I'm kinda excited about the trajectory that my career is going and I was at BT Networks and I was at Google. Then I was employed, unemployed for a little bit, uh, but then I went into TV networks, and now I'm at CBS News. I'm not really sure what's going to happen next, you know, something even more amazing. Here's my thing. So, for me, when it comes to having a career, I don't really believe in age. What I mean is that I don't think you need to be a certain age in order to accomplish something. Like, I don't believe in that whole thing. It's like, oh, once you're mid-20s or over... You can't accomplish anything else like that's just like not factually correct at all you can do whatever you want whenever you want if i wake up one day at age 45 i want to be a neurosurgeon i'm going to go to med school just because i eventually turn 27 or 35 or 42 doesn't mean i can't really pursue any additional goals you know and i just feel like a lot of people sort of like compare their journey to other people's journeys and they feel stuck if they're not accomplishing something on the same rate as someone else but I don't know like every day for me it's sort of a new day to begin again and I feel like each day I'm going to like learn something new and like pursue another passion and I'm just not, not going to let you know age or anyone else's journey sort of deter me from the path that I'm on. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I was able to share some informative insight on what it's like for me to work as an overnight journalist at CBS News with the morning show, CBS Mornings. Um, as you can see, it's a very challenging and very multifaceted, fast-paced role. My typical role is overnight in control run, but in this video, I sort of showed you what it's like in our hard news center as sort of a crash producer. Um, overnight so yeah crash producing is extremely intense because our show airs in the mornings from 7 a.m to 9 a.m on the east coast and a story could break at 6 30 and you have to get it ready for air by 7 and by that i mean you have to do your research you have to write the script you have to get it legal you have to get it clear by right and clearance you have to get it approved by standards you have to get approved by your senior producers you have to gather your elements you have to edit the video you have to collaborate with your editor and just like it, it's so fast paced and it's like very multifaceted but i really enjoyed my experience in heart news center it was intense but i learned so much during the shift um next week i'm going to go back into my regular shift which is in the CBS News control room where I lead the fact check team and that shift it's still overnight but that one is from midnight to 10 a.m and with that rule I typically work from home so I don't really have to worry about waking up you know hours before my shift you know catching over at a very strange hour I can just sort of like wake up from bed go to my sofa or go to my dining table and log on from home so that's a bit better um working from home overnight you know if i had a day side shift i wouldn't mind going into the office but since it's overnight i'm in new york city it's a big city i'm very short very small and very petite um it's just you know not that safe to travel at 3 a.m to go to an office so but anyways thank you for watching this video um i'm gonna be sharing a video soon on my working from home experience in my control room role so yeah just subscribe to my channel or come back to watch that video like comment and i will see you soon thank you bye